Hey guys, welcome to a batch of filming day. Let's talk about Bad Cree by Jessica Johns. Welcome back to another rambling review. It's Alyssa. If you're new here, hello. Uh, and if you're not, welcome back. Look, I can't get comfy today. Okay, <laughs> I was sent this arc a little while ago and I was really excited about it. And I finally have read it. Uh, and what really excited me about it is one, it deals with dreams, which are, I feel like really hard to do well in literature. Two, it's an indigenous author, which I am trying to broaden my reading of indigenous lit First Nations people. Because I realized I am like woefully bad at reading books from those cultures. And I've been trying to make a conscious effort to fix that because I shouldn't be. And then thirdly, it's because it is a literary horror novel, which we can get into whether or not it really is or not, but that's how it was built. So we'll go over what this is about. I'll read you the blurb and then we'll talk about my thoughts. I do have some notes, unlike in other videos where I just kind of wing it. This one does have a little bit of structure. And this is a debut and I do love a good debut. When Mackenzie wakes up with a severed crow's head in her hands, she panics. Only moments earlier, she had been fending off massive burns in a snow-covered forest. In bed, when she blinks, the head disappears. Night after night, Mackenzie's dreams return her to a memory from before her sister Sabrina's untimely death. A weekend at the family's, the family's lakefront campsite, long obscured by a fog of guilt. But when the waking world starts closing in, to a murder of crows stalks her every move around the city. She wakes up from a dream of drowning, throwing up water, and she gets threatening text messages from someone claiming to be Sabrina. Mackenzie knows this is more than she can handle alone. Traveling north to her rural hometown in Alberta, she finds her family still steeped in the same grief that she ran away to Vancouver to escape. They welcome her back, but their shaky reunion seems only to intensify her dreams and to make them more dangerous. What really happened that night at the lake? What did it have to do with Sabrina's death? Only a bad Cree would put her family at risk, but what if whatever has been calling Mackenzie home was already inside? So like that definitely sounds gripping and compelling and something you want to read, right? First off, I really love this. I thought it was so well done. The dream stuff was not cheesy. It reminded me a lot of when you started to get your answers near the end, there were pieces that started to remind me of Empire of Wild by Sherry Dimeline. I'm sorry saying that wrong. Really love this book. Also kind of a horror. Also in Canada. Really loved it. I loved the way we looked at grief in this story, how Mackenzie is not processing grief, but thinks she is by going away from things. When she goes back home, she starts to actually confront her grief, confront some of the reasons why she left, repair and rebuild relationships with her family, with her culture, uh, repair connections with her town. There's a lot that's going on inside this little narrative of horror. It's it's, it's really brilliantly done. I've seen a couple people kick around different genres for this, uh, whether or not it really truly is horror. I feel like an avid by the books horror person is not going to think that this is horror. Someone who just reads a lot of liter literary fiction may actually think this is horror. In reality, this is mostly like horror magical realism, if that's even a genre because there's a lot of magical elements that are just part of the regular, normal world of this story. I don't know if it's necessarily a fantasy. I think there's a lot of just discussion you could have over where you want to pigeonhole this book. And I honestly think that most of that discussion is irrelevant because it doesn't change how you feel about the book or your experience with the book, because it's really freaking good. It is so well done. The prose is really good. This is a great review. It's really good. It's a really good book. Read it. Oh my god. What makes it really good? This isn't a straightforward story even about grief. There is so much that gets pulled into it. And it's short. It's like 200 and something pages. That gets pulled into this story about uh, the way that First Nations people are haunted by the events that happen in the past to earlier generations, the way that colonization has destroyed the land, the way that families keep secrets from each other, which can cause issues that maybe didn't need to exist if you had just been open and honest about the things that occur with you. There is a lot of discussion about family in general, 
place, uh, community, reconnecting with things that have been taken from you in terms of your culture and your belief systems, the things that make you, you re-identifying with the place and the people you come from. There's just so much packed into this story. It's honestly a must read. For, I, I, I absolutely love this. I am so grateful to Doubleday for sending me this arc. I feel like I don't deserve it, but it was just, it was so lovely, honestly, and dark and not cheesy at all. That dream thing is so difficult to do well. And Jessica Johns really does it well. It is so creepy as you watch the story unfold and the dreams, the, 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 the barrier between dream world and reality starts to blur and blur and blur and blur until she, there is no difference between the two. There are moments that feel almost like a kindred where she is slipping into an alternate reality that only she can get to. And it's just so good. I don't even know how to explain it anymore than, than that. It, it is definitely worth your read. I think if you kind of like fantasy and literary fiction and like paranormal stuff, you're going to really love this for sure. And I can't wait to see what Jessica Johns writes next. I think that there's a lot of talent in there and it's going to be phenomenal. There's two pieces of information I do want to just add in here. One, the reason why she wrote this book is because, because a professor basically said that writing about dreams is stupid. And she was like, well, I'll show you. I'll write you a book about dreams and it's going to be amazing. And she, I think, showed him. So there's that. But then there's also, I'm going to link it in the description. There was an interview that the author did with a bookstore called Left Bank Books that has a really great discussion of the the where to place this in genres and and. I just feel like it's a really interesting discussion. I don't think it has any bearing on the overall quality uh, of the story, but I think it's a really interesting discussion. I like these books that blur the lines between different genres. I just, I feel like, I don't know, they're more fun in a way because they don't pigeonhole themselves into any one thing. And I feel like they're so much more approachable because you can come at them from all different kinds of angles as a reader. You know, some people are like, I absolutely will never read literary fiction. Well, you might want to read this literary fiction because it's a lot more like the horror novels that you normally read than say some, uh, like, I don't know, some other literary fiction. I just think it's a fun little discussion and I would love to, if you've read this, I'd love to know where you would sort of stick this in a genre. If you've list, if you go and you watch that little interview, I'd love to know how you feel about it. I would also, if anybody feels like it, there's a lot of questions. I got a lot of questions today on this one. Give me your definition of magical realism because I just feel like this is a debate that can continuously be had. And I know that there are the exact definitions of it, but like as readers, like colloquially how we use the term magical realism, like what do you feel like is like the, like the pop culture kind of definition, the urban dictionary kind of definition of magical realism? I really hope there isn't a really gross magical realism definition on urban dictionary. <laughs> Please nobody look it up. That's that. I think this is great. There's a lot packed into this book. It is really well done. If you don't like birds, perhaps don't read it. Some people have like a really, really deep seated fear of birds, but otherwise I don't think it's like scary horror. That question came up in the author interview. So we're gonna, we're gonna do it here. We're gonna answer it here. I don't think it's scary horror, but if you don't like birds, like you, you really don't like birds, maybe skip this one. But otherwise I think everybody should read it. That is it. Uh, like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video, whatever it may be. This is my channel and I can do whatever I want. Bye. So just sit with me Talking to the night and to the morning Building cat mystery I don't think I ever want to go Come closer next to me Trying to find another way to say this But I think, I think